Life Audio. Hello, thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I am your host, Kyle Norman, and after this short word from our sponsor, we will dive in today's Bible verse. Thanks for switching lanes to Raising Cane's. One box combo, please. That's four juicy chicken fingers. We'll start cooking. Garlicky butter Texas toast tastes as good as it's looking. Fresh coleslaw and crispy fries you won't be skipping. And our secret cane sauce you'll want to keep dipping. Plus, our lemonade or iced tea made fresh today by me. Yo, 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 here's your chicken to go. Wow, that was fast. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. (laughs) Hey there, it's Nicole Eunice from the How to Study the Bible podcast, and I'd love to invite you to join us as we weekly discover a passage of God's Word together. From beginning to end, from principles to practicals, we are here to make sure that God's Word is powerful and relevant to your life. If that sounds like something you're looking for, I would love to invite you to subscribe. You can go to lifeaudio.com and search How to Study the Bible, and we'll see you there. Who is Jesus? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 14, verse 6. It is one of the iconic scriptures known by countless Christians and used in response to many questions of faith. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But have you ever wondered what those terms actually mean? What is Jesus getting at? After all, Jesus isn't leading the disciples in a Bible study. He is not discussing the fine points of theology. Jesus is speaking about his identity. He is opening up about who he is. So who is Jesus? Jesus is our way to salvation. Jesus is talking about eternal life with God. He is speaking about our future redemption. This makes sense given the context of this verse. Jesus has just spoken about his upcoming crucifixion, and all of this takes place in the context of the Last Supper. More than this, commentators remind us that the language of the way, particularly for the Jewish people, was very specific. The way wasn't a random path or roadway, this trail indistinguishable from others. No, the way was a specific reference to the 40-year path of salvation in the Exodus. When the Jewish people thought about their liberation from Egypt, and wandering through the desert toward the promised land, they would refer to the path that they took as the way. The way was this pathway from slavery to freedom, from exile to promise, from sin to salvation. As time went on, and Israel began to look forward to the coming of the Messiah, they began again to use this language. They began to think about the Messiah as walking the way of salvation and inviting others to walk that road with him. Isaiah, therefore, calls the people to, quote, make the way straight. The language of the way, it meant the pathway of salvation or the road to the eternal promised land that the Messiah would lead us upon. This is really a beautiful invitation. For anybody who asks the question, how do I get close to God? Or how do I get to heaven? Or how do I know I'm saved? Jesus says he is the answer. He is the one who connects our lives to God. We need not be troubled or dismayed. We need not be concerned in spirit or feel abandoned or alone. Jesus provides the way to our Heavenly Father. He opens the door to a deep connection with God in our lives. So anybody who is longing for an experience of God, the answer is fully revealed 
get close to Jesus. No wonder the community of disciples, long before they were ever called Christians, were called people of the way. But Jesus is also the truth. He is the truth of God. To look at Jesus is to look at God. Do you hear how radical this is? Every once in a while, people suggest that Jesus never claimed divine status. But that's fundamentally not true, because he does it here. Jesus images the invisible God. He is the full manifestation of his presence. Scripture speaks this truth again and again. Paul writes that in Jesus, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and the book of Hebrews declares Jesus to be the full radiance of God's glory. This really is an astounding claim, one that is either true and factual, or it is the height of blasphemy. For example, I am the spitting image of my grandfather. I bear an incredible likeness to him at this age. But I would never say that to see me is to see my grandfather. Furthermore, I would never claim that my words are his words or that he acts in me. But this is exactly what Jesus says. To see me, Jesus says, is to see the Father. Who Jesus is, what Jesus said, and what Jesus did testifies again and again that he is not just a random sage or teacher. He isn't someone who just had lovely things to say about God. No, Jesus is the truth of God. He is God. In Jesus, God has been put on full display. And so the question is, can we take Jesus at his word? We can, because he is the truth. Lastly, Jesus is the life. He is the bestower of life. Through Jesus, we can live in the constant presence and power of God. One of the things that Jesus says elsewhere is that he has come to bestow life, and life in all abundance. The life that Jesus offers is not just existence. It's not just surviving. He isn't speaking about biology or genetics. Jesus ushers us into the deep, the rich, the soul-satisfied life. Because faith isn't a matter of thought or doctrine. Faith isn't just a religious system of agreement. Faith is a way of life. It is a way of living in this world. And so when Jesus says that he is the life, he is saying that he is the person that we are to choose to live with. He is the one that we need to follow as teacher as Lord, as Savior, as Helper. It means that this day and all the days that follow it are to be lived in His presence. Because Jesus is the way, we can be confident that He will guide us to our redemption. Because Jesus is the truth, we can have confidence that His presence and power will always be with us. And more than anything, we can know that the life of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit flows through us, enabling us to tackle anything that this world throws at us. So let us follow Jesus as a way, as the truth, and as the life. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. One box combo, please. That's four juicy chicken fingers you won't be skipping and our secret cane sauce you want to keep dipping. Wow, that was fast. Raisin Cane's chicken fingers, one love.